go, let that go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Let it go, let that go. Slow it down. What's the meaning of life? We need to understand the type of grip life's got. Life means covering, it also means bail. You won't receive the blessings from Yah to do your will. Abraham's blessing never came until he let life go, which was Yahweh's will. Leave your father's house and your kindred too. No cousins, no nephews, I'm talking about you. Take your wife, your belongings, all your household, son. But leave your kid folk, they can wreck your fun. I'm establishing a covenant and I chose you. I saw everybody else, but only you will do. Be a righteous man, walk before me, Abraham. I will bless your seed to inherit this land. I'm calling you out to commune with me. You gotta let life go, only then you'll see. So let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Shabbat 
shalom, Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom, Mishpaka. I want to say uh, thank you all for being with us on this evening, this uh, awesome, beautiful Shabbat day, Sabbath day, the day that the Most High created for us and uh, that we are to honor him and bless him on this day. I want to say, uh, send a shout out to our listeners in uh, Bunjabura, Burundi, in uh, the Philippines, in China, Indonesia, Sister Etta Grisby and Brother Dier Crowley, Brother D, my cousin Sarah Emmanuel, Big Bro Max Othello, and Jarita, our sister. Shabbat Shalom. We love you all. Love you. Thank you for being with us on this beautiful and blessed day. We pray that you will get something out of this uh, teaching on today, which I am very sure you will. I'm not going to talk too long because it is a, uh, a awesome lesson that um, my wife has gotten together here. And I, I will be helping her out every now and then. I'll be saying something. But we would like for you as well to join us. Uh, you know, be it that you uh, text uh, on the chat line here or call in on the free conference call number. Trust me, it's free. Uh, I know that sometimes when you dial the number, it'll say that you'll be charged because it's outside your area code. You will not be charged. It is a free call. That number is, uh, you dial 1-605-313-4415. That's 1-605-313-4415. The access code that you want to put in when prompt is 816-683. 816-683. Shabbat Shalom, Moray Ron Simmons. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Glad to have you with us. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with a word of prayer. And uh, afterwards, I will turn it over to my angel that the Most High has blessed me with. Father Yah, hallelujah, we praise you, we bless you on this beautiful and blessed Shabbat day. Father, we submit and surrender ourselves to you. We want to thank you for how you have blessed us and how you have uh, comforted us and been with us, Father. And uh, we ask that you continue to direct us and use us for your honor and your glory. We want to be used for what you have created us to do, each and every one of us, Father. And as we go through this lesson and every lesson that we bring forth, Father, we ask that you would guide us and direct us. Father, that you would touch the hearts of the listeners that are listening, that you will open up their understanding and allow your word to be given and received in clarity. And Father, that uh, not only that they will take the knowledge that is given to them, but they would apply what is given to them, that they would uh, produce it in their lives, Father. We want to be vessels for you, Father, and the only way we can be vessels for you is to apply the word that is given. And Father, we ask that the light so shine through us, your spirit, that you would use us, Father, and that we can draw and win others unto you according to your word. Father, if there's any that is sick, we ask that you would touch them and bless them right now, that you would deliver them, Father. Any that is uh, bereaved right now, that you would comfort them. Father, whatever the situation is, whatever they're dealing with, meet that need to let them know that you love them, you care for them. For your word said, it is not my will for any man to perish. Father, that's love. That is love. You sent your son, Yahushua HaMashiach. You said he's your only begotten son to bring us back to you. That's love. 
And Father, we ask that you would meet the need of your people. Please, showing your love even more, Father, that you care for them. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. Most of all, we ask that you would forgive us of any sins that we have committed. Please, Father, that you would truly and rightfully be glorified in our lives. We love you, we praise you, and we bless you. In Yahusha's name, hallelujah and hallelujah. Shalom, shalom, Miss Marka. Hope everybody's doing good on this this Saturday, it's just Sabbath. It's not raining like it's been all week long and last week, so we have a little sunshine our way. All right, we're gonna go ahead because we have a lot to delve into here, and I'm gonna be going um, <laughs> kind of all over into the old and the new, so we can <clears throat> excuse me get some clarity on this here and see exactly what the scripture says, not what we've been told, not what somebody said. But what the Most High has said, because we know that it is his standards that we must adhere to, not man's standards. So it doesn't matter if it contradicts, <coughs> excuse me, what man has taught. If it contradicts the word, then we are not to abide by that. We are only to go strictly by what the word says, regardless. Amen, family? Amen, amen. All right, so we're going to get started. I want to uh, say... Hi to my sister Jarita, I miss you. To my brother Murray Ron, to Steve, glad to see you on Steve, hope you're doing good. Um, our cousin Sarah down in Florida, D. Uh, sister uh, Etta Grisby, haven't seen her on, so glad to have you on. And my, um, my sandbox friend, Sandra. From all the way from Mississippi, that's where we're from. She's not there and I'm not there, but we've been knowing each other since, gosh. We go way back, don't we, Faye? Way back. It's good to have you on. All right, so uh, let's get into it here And the topic. I don't know if you guys can see it. It says the law. Has it really been done away with? So we're going to look and see what the scripture has to say about that there. And first, we want to take a look into these words here, because we know that the, the Greek translated as law, but in the Hebrew is Torah. So we're going to take a look at that first and, and, and to establish the definition of these two words to see, are they actually the same or are they different? And how do we re reconcile that if they are different? So law. Uh, the Greek word for law is nomos, and it comes from a, uh, Strong's G3551. And the definition of it that it has in there is anything that is established, anything received by usage, custom, a law, a command, a law or rule, producing a state approved of Elohim, of the Mosaic law, and referring to the context, either to the volume of the law or to its contents, the name of the more important part, the Pentateuch, is put for the entire collection of the sacred books of the Old Testament. The Christian religion, this is what they says. the Christian religion says, the law demanding faith, the moral instruction given by Yeshua, the precept, precept concerning love. So it's saying that the moral instruction is given by him. So just remember that, that's key right there. Okay, and then we want to look at the word Torah from Strong's H8451. And it is defined as direction, instruction, law, teachings. Uh, that's Strong's body of prophetic teaching, instruction on messianic age, body of priestly direction or instruction. So you have the prophecy, you have the messianic age, and then you have the priestly instructions and in the uh, Deuteronomic. Or mosaic law. So practically it's saying all of the Old Testament and then the Messianic age, that is the New Testament. So basically it's saying the entire, you know, the old and what we refer to as, as the new. Although we know those are misnomers. Okay, so let's look at Torah a little bit deeper here. The Hebrew word, uh, Strong's 8451, is usually translated into English, the English word law. 
So when you go into the New Testament, you see law. So whenever you see law, just exchange it for Torah and you'll see why. Because of this translation, there's a great, a grave, I would say grave misunderstanding of what Torah truly is. Torah is not law. When we use the word law, we assume a certain meaning and concept of the word that is not present in the Hebrew scriptures. Remember, this is a Hebrew book written by Hebrews. Uh, the Most High chose uh, the Israelites who were Hebrews. So the perspective, the culture, the mindset is written from that, that particular perspective. These were people of the East, our people of the East. So you have to remember that their thought, mindset, their culture is totally direct and in direct opposition of the West. Totally. Totally. So when we try to... See, I'm not getting any audio. Try uh, talking to the mic. Thumbs up if you guys can hear me okay now. Keep saying something. Okay. Can you all hear me? I don't know how much they missed. You think I need to go back on top? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just go back uh, to the last slide, maybe. Okay, let's go back here. All right, we're gonna, we'll go back here. Can you guys hear me? hear me okay? Thumbs up, thumbs up. I want to make sure before I proceed that you all are hearing me okay. I know there's a delay in um, response, so I want to give it time before I proceed to make sure that everyone is hearing me okay and our audio is working appro appropriately. Are they hearing okay? Um, they haven't responded yet, so just keep... Okay, well, we'll proceed. Hopefully you guys can hear okay. I'm going to go back to Nomos. G3551. Sorry, hold on for a moment. All righty. Is anything established, anything received by usage, a custom, a law, a command? This is law that you see. A law rule producing a state approved of uh, Elohim of the Mosaic law and referring to the context either to the volume of the law or to its contents. The name of the more important part, the Pentateuch, is put for the entire collection of the sacred books of the Old Testament. And the Christian religion says the law demanding faith, the moral instruction given by Yeshua, the precept concerning love. Torah, Strong's 8451, and it means direction, instruction, law, teachings. Actually, it's, it's divine instruction or, or teachings, divine teachings. It's a body of prophetic teaching. This is what Strong's is saying. Uh, and, uh, instruction in messianic age, body of priestly direction, instruction, the De Deuteronomic or Mosaic law. <clears throat> Strong's 8451 Hebrew Torah is usually translated into the English word law. Because of this translation, there is a great misunderstanding of what Torah really is. Torah is not law. When we use the word law, we assume a certain meaning and concept of the word that is not present in the Hebrew scriptures. So we need to just remember that. Torah is a Hebraic definition of a... Uh, it's a Hebrew definition of Torah. It's a set of instruction, as I said, from a father to his children. So bear that in mind. This is coming from a Hebrew perspective now, not from a Western mindset uh, that a lot of us have been taught. So we want to delve into it from a, a culture, from its correct cultural perspective to see what it is and what, what it entails. My son, do not forget my teaching, and that is translated Torah when you research it, but keep my commands as mitzvah in your heart, Proverbs 3 and 1. So he's saying, don't forget my teaching. Don't forget the Torah and what is translated as law. He said, don't forget it, but keep my commandments in your heart. 
the word the word Torah comes from the Hebrew word Yara. Strong's 3384, a verb which means to flow or throw uh, something. And you can see the, the constant is up there. Because when, when uh, uh, Hebrew is written out, it does not have the uh, vowels included with it. Now, you, when you go and look into um, the Jewish um, definitions or, or wordings uh, about the uh, Hebraic words, they'll say that they don't have consonants, but they do have consonants. You just have to know how to apply them. So, and the people that still have it, our ancestors over in Africa, they still know how to apply it and put the correct uh, vowels in there. And actually, that's in Muwali's book. Uh, he tells us how to do that. It's a verb which means to flow or throw something. So you have the the hay, the resh, and the yo. That's the y, the r, and the h in there. And I'm I'm not going to get into that right now, real deep. I don't want to go too deep on you guys on that. So <laughs> we're going to move on. If the Torah is violated out of dis disrespect or defiant disobedience, the child is punished. Remember, it is instruction from a parent to the child. So that's the Hebraic perspective. That's why I said bear that in mind. If the child desires to follow the instructions out of loving obedience, but falls short of that expectation, then the child is commended for the effort and counseled on how to perform the instructions better the next time. Exodus 16 and 28. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Commandments again uh, is mitzvah, Strong's 4687. And uh, mitzvah, just here the definition, collectively it says, the law which was commanded. So that which was commanded. Law, ordinance, precept. So essentially commandments is everything that he says. That's why it's commandments. What he commands of us. So it says here H46-7 matches the uh, uh, Hebrew mitzvah ordinance in H46-87 and it occurs three times in the KGB. For the commandment is a lamp. Now this is what scripture is saying about his commandments. Which we said essentially is, is his Torah, is his precept, is his ordinance, it encompasses all what he tells of us. So he said that the commandment is a lamp and the law is a light of the Torah is a light and reproofs of instruction of the way of life. Proverbs 6 and 23. Then spake Yeshua again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8 and 12. So you see up in Proverbs 6 and 23, it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is a light, and a reproof of instruction. And then Yeshua comes back in the uh, the Hadashah and says in John 8 and 12 that, I am the light. So we can reconcile here and say then, since he's saying he is the light, and then since uh, Proverbs 6 and 23 says that the commandment is the light, which is his word, then we can just reconcile that and say that Yeshua is the word. Can we not do that? Mm -hmm. And is there a scripture to support that? Yes. Yes, there's scripture that supports that. That's in John, the first chapter. We know that very, most of us has been in, you know, have been in church all our lives or have, have went to church. Those that used to go to church in the church that grew up in the church. You know this. In the beginning was the word and the word was, was Elohim or God. And the word was with Elohim or with God. And then you go on a little further says, and the word, it became what? It became flesh he dwelt among and it us. dwelt among us. So he yes. sent his word mm. and his word became flesh and it dwelt among us. So Yeshua is the light and the light is the Torah or the divine instructions. Remember that that's key there. The word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Psalms 119, 105. Did we not say 
just now in John, that John 1, what it says about the word, and they're all the same. Mm -hmm. So the word, Yeshua, the Torah, they're synonymous. They're synonymous. Remember that. That's key. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Yeshua is not in them. His word is not in them. To the Torah and the testimony, if they speak not according mm -hmm. to this word, what word? The word that he has given us in his holy word, what we call the Bible. Yeah. Answered and said unto them, Ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. And I left my scripture off of that, but I have that again. That's in John, I think it is. So, we want to look at some words here, some definitions here, so that we can really get some clarity here. John 1, 3, and 4. We're going to take a look at sin here, see what sin is, okay? So we can... See what's going on with scripture here. And all this stuff at the end is going to tie all together. Whosoever <coughs> committed sin transgresseth also the Torah. For sin is the transgression of the Torah. So here we have scripture telling us in the book of John. That anybody that transgress against the Torah, that some people say law, that is sin. Now, we have a problem here. Because it has been taught throughout the years in the church, in the Christianity, in Christianity, that the Torah or the law has been done away with. But here John is telling us that sin is based off of the Torah. So now, I, I ask the question then, if the Torah or if the law has been done away with, then how do we know what sin is? How do we reconcile that? If it's been done away with, we have a problem right there. If we say that it has been done away with, meaning that it's void, it's, it's, it's of none effect, it's no good, it's, it's out the way, we have a big problem here. Because in John, it tells us specifically what sin is, and that's transgressing the law. So in order to know what sin is, you have to have a knowledge of, you have to have an understanding of, and you have to be walking in the Torah. Otherwise, it says it's sin. I didn't say that. The Word says that. And we have to be mindful, as I told you all when we first started. If man is telling us something and is not substantiated in the word, we have to let go of what man says. Man is not our savior. Man is not our Elohim. Man is not going to judge us. It is his word. And the judge is none other than Elohim himself. Yes. Now let's look at transgressive. The Greek word is anomia. Anomia. I'm sorry. Anomia. Strong's G458. And it is defined as the condition without law. Mm. So, yeah, the condition without law. Hmm. Contempt and violation of law or Torah. Again, iniquity. Wickedness. Again, people, we have a problem here. We really do. If we are saying that the Torah or the law has been done away with, but when you go to the Greek, because, you know, the New Testament is written in Greek, Corne Greek. And so that's why I went to transgress it, because John is in the New Testament. So let's see what these they're saying in their language. And it's saying that transgress it, is a condition of without the law. So you void of the law, a violation of the Torah. So again, if it's been done away with, it's saying here that that is a violation of Torah. 
It is iniquity if you don't uphold it, is what it's saying. I didn't say it. That's what it's saying here. It's wickedness to be without Torah. And nomia comes from the root word animos. Strong's G459, departing from the Torah, a violator of the Torah. One that is lawless, one that is wicked. That is directly from the Strong's Dictionary defining this Greek word anomia. And that is where the word, uh, I mean animos, I'm sorry, uh, is the, uh, the root word of anomia. And, uh, and anomos is one that has departed from the law. A violator of the Torah, one that is wicked. And lawless. So if you don't have the Torah, the law, you're wicked, it's saying. That's that's scripture. I didn't say that. That's why I said we really gotta look at you. Hello. Hey, yes. shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. How you doing, Moray? Oh, uh, long day, but I'm uh I'm making it in. Uh, <laughs> you sound we tired. Missing you, my brother. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Good to be here. Miss you as well. <laughs> shalom, Moray. Uh, shalom. So, uh, sorry for interrupting. Go, go ahead. Just, uh, just con uh, continue on. All righty. All right. Okay. We're on uh, sin. So, I'm just doing a breakdown, just a rehash of what I just said. Sin, it, it said what well, we just went over, breaking of the Torah. One that is without the Torah. One who has departed from the Torah, a violator of the Torah. Again, we we got we gotta we gotta look at this thing here because we we've been taught it's been taught in the church throughout the years that the law has been done away with. We don't have to acknowledge it. It's it's done. It's void. It's of no good. It's nullified. But back here, I'm sorry. Back here. Uh, jump too far right here is what I want we see right here that it's telling us what sin is what lawlessness is what wickedness is it is he that is without the Torah you commit sin when you transgress the Torah and I told you what transgressive mean a condition of not having the Torah or as some say the law If the Torah has been done away with and sin is the transgression of the Torah, what now constitutes sin then? As I said before, what, what, what do we have as a gauge to tell us what sin is? What is the measuring stick then? If, if, if it's been done away with, how do we know if someone is sinning then? Mm -hmm. Are we able to determine that without the law? Is that possible? No, it's not. Okay, so, all right, just, just asking some questions for some clarity here. So, it is breaking of the Torah, sin. We're still talking about sin here. One without the Torah. One who has departed from the Torah. You're not walking in it. You're not adhering to it. You're going your own way. What is righteousness and who is righteous? I'm not going to really delve into this much. Um, I'm going to look at a few scriptures here. And I, like I said, it's a lot. We, we could, I could have went into, delve into a lot right here, but I'm not going to do that. Isaiah 51, 1, 4, and 7. Hearken to me, ye, you that follow after righteousness. Hearken means here, a shema. In Hebrew, and to and understand in Hebrew, here is not the same meaning as it is in the Western concept. Shema means to also respond to what you're hearing. Yes. Not just to hear it, but to act upon what you hear. When he says, Hear, O ye, Israel, is Shema Israel. Hear and respond to what you're hearing. Act upon. Do it. 
So that's what he's saying. Hearken to me. Listen to me. Do as I say. That's what it's saying here. Ye that follow after righteousness. Sadak. That is the Hebrew word for righteous. Or righteousness. Ye that seek Elohim. Look unto the rock whence ye are hewn. And to the hole of the pit which ye are dead. For, again, that word hearken unto me my people and give ear unto me oh my nation so who is he talking about mm. right there there's a key israel. he's talking to israel right here yes. he says my nation israel is his nation always have been always will be yes. i know they say that the northern tribes are lost there's nowhere in scripture somebody told you that just to screw you up into thinking that <laughs> To believe that they are lost. Scripture does not support that. As a matter of fact, what scripture is that? That's in uh, help me out, Isaiah. When he said, I'm going to bring them forth out of the land of uh, uh, Egypt and uh, Ethiopia. I went over that last week. All of that was in the, this is the, the, his people, his dispersed people. He said, in the land over beyond the sea. And we went over that, and that was described as over in the West. And who's in the West, we said? We oh, okay, so they're not lost, people. Uh -huh. But we ain't going to get into that. I, I went into that last week. And that's why I wanted to get in here. So he's talking about Israel, the descendants, the remnant of us that are left. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he's still talking to us. Isn't his word still relevant today? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, every bit of it. For a Torah shall proceed from me. Instruction shall proceed from me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And I will make my judgment to rest for a light of the people. Here's that word again. Three times. So whenever, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. Whenever you see a, a repetition of a word or a statement, it has significance there. So I've just read, this is my third time reading, hearken, listen, obey, do unto me. You that know righteousness, so you that know to do right, he said, listen to me. The people in whose heart is my Torah, fear not, fear ye not the reproach of men. Don't be afraid what men say, neither be afraid of their revilings. Don't be, don't be concerned with what, what men say. Man cannot give you life. And they can't take your life. Sedek, mm. so righteousness. Hebrew, the Hebrew word for righteousness, I told you. Uh, a righteous person is one that, that has the attributes of Elohim. This is the definition of it I, I got. Elohim as covenant keeping, one as covenant keeping, as in redemption. Psalms 119 and 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy Torah is the truth. So what is his Torah? Truth. It's the truth. But we say it has been the law, the Torah, has been done away with. It said it's the truth. But then Yeshua turned around and said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So let's reconcile this again. We already did the word. And said he's the word. And the word is the light. He said he's the light. So we can say that the word and he, he's the word and he's the light. Okay, here we go with the truth. So he's the word. Mm -hmm. He's the light. Mm -hmm. Now we're on here where it says he is the truth. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at it. And we have looked at it from those perspectives. What I just said. From the old and the new. Out of the mouth of two. Now, um, you mind if I, you know, piggyback on that a little mm. bit? No, go right ahead. So, you see here he said, I am, I am the truth. And the Torah is the truth. And so the word was sent. Remember I told you? And, and the Torah is divine instruction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I want to share something real quick, and I'm going back to uh, what she had talked about earlier, the book of John, first chapter. Now, she just uh, broke down where uh, it said that uh, Yahusha is 
the light, uh, the truth, and um, what was the third one? I'm sorry, I can't think light, of it all. Light, truth, hands. word. Light, we truth, went over those. and word. Thank you. In John, we know the scripture. John 1, verse uh, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Elohim, and the word was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. Now, down in verse 14, the same chapter, it reads, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, I want to stop there. I want to say real quick, we know that the Most High, Elohim, Yah, when he created the, the world, or the earth, and I hope I'm not stepping ahead here. When he created everything, he spoke, mm -hmm. and things came mm -hmm. into existence. Mm -hmm. We also know in scripture that Yahusha said, before Abraham was, I was. So he's letting you know, or letting us know, that he was there in the beginning with the Most High. Yes. Now, this is what I share with my wife. We see the, uh, in Scripture that she pointed out that Yahusha is the Word, he's the light, and he's the truth. And I just read to you where it and, said and that... And so is Torah, it says. Yes. We looked at the Old and the New. Yes. And, and I just showed you in Scripture here in First John where it said that uh, the Word was uh, with Yah and the Word was Yah and uh, the Word became flesh. Let me tell you just how powerful the Most High is that we may not even realize how powerful He is. We know that He created everything by speaking into existence. When it came to man, the Word tells us that He formed man. He didn't speak, but he formed man, and then he breathed the breath of life. But we serve a Yah that is so powerful. Get this. Understand this. That is so powerful that he commanded his word to become flesh, whom we call Yahusha or Yeshua, and some say Jesus. He is the word of the most high made flesh. Thank you. Yes, he is. And the word is life. In him is life. In the word is life. In the Torah is life. Yes. In the creator is life. You still there, Moray? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so you're saying, um, you're saying first John, but did you, did you mean John 1 and 1? Yes. Forgive me. Yes, John 1 and 1. Okay. Um, me and you had this somewhat of a discussion. Um, mm -hmm. In John 1 and 1, which he is really repeating um, uh, better sheep, which is Genesis one in one, uh -huh. but he's going by, um, and this is another uh, proof of um, how they used the targums. He's actually speaking the targums uh, in John one in one because in the Aramaic, when you go to uh, better sheep one in one, mm -hmm. it is implied that the son, even though it says uh, in Hebrew, uh, better sheep. Uh, 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 which is in better sheet in the head or in the beginning or in the principal place, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the furthest place, created. Now that word created, bara is in Hebrew created. Um, it also means um, in the Aramaic seed or son, where if you can remember Barabba, Son of the Father. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. So you got the bar in there. So in the Aramaic, it implies that it was in the Son uh, in the beginning that Elohim together. That's why it says Elohim created the the, uh, the heavens and the earth. And so here he uses 
uh, Yohanan or John use this um, the word because the word uh, in Aramaic is always implied, and, and the Hebrew really, um, when you look into it, is always implied uh, as the Son. Mm-hmm. And so the Son obeying the Father's word in the beginning created the heavens and the earth. Even though the Father is behind it all, the Son is obeying the Father by speaking the word. And the Ruach, who is the mother, that's why you see her hovering around creation. Mm-hmm. She bursts it out mm-hmm. by her power. So you got so you got the three in one in, in the creation. And so I don't want to get you guys off subject, nor am I disagreeing with you guys, because I totally disagree. I just want to uh, because you mean you told me agree? <laughs> Wait, what I say? I totally disagree. <laughs> Oh, that you that you disagree? No, that's what you said. I said you meant you totally agree, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I okay. totally agree. <laughs> yeah, so when me and Moray was talking earlier earlier in the week, I was telling him all I all I was doing was really elaborating even more on what you so I, so therefore I don't want to talk too much on the uh on the Targum because I don't want to get people confused uh, between what the Aramaic says and what the Hebrew says. I want to uh, stick to what you're saying, which is which is correct. I just wanted to uh, throw that in there. And also, as reference, you can also go to the Dead Sea Scrolls um, for Aramaic and uh, Hebrew. But I uh, um, return it back to you. All right, thank you. And you know that word better she I I, I could have went deep on you, you know, on some of these words on, on Torah and went to the paleo, but you know, I had to consider my audience, you know, Audrey. Right, right, so uh right. that's why I didn't go there, you know, better she yeah, no, no, I I, 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 I totally I, I totally under, I totally understand. <laughs> that that's a loaded word. Like you I thought you was gonna go there. You kind of went there yeah, a little, no, I, a little I, bit. I, uh, I didn't want. I tried not to just go <laughs> too much into it because it it start up another conversation. So I just wanted, you know, that's why I kind of lightly hit on it. <laughs> I don't want to get off subject with you. It, this, you know what? It the word is so intertwined. You can start one way and end up another, but yet it's still connected. Mm-hmm. And you can just sit here all day and you're like, man, and then, you know, you'll get this understanding. Like, what? but this right here is connected to this too. And then you off somewhere else. It's it, it, it's like that. His word is like that. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. So, uh, uh, can, I, can I say one thing, one other thing? Just to make it, um, in the in the old, and I got a lot of books, but in the, uh, when it says, and this is why they picked up stones to try to uh, kill the Messiah. Whenever he says, I am, I am, uh, I am the bread, uh, I am the door, I, I am whatever he says I am, uh, he does not say Anoki or Ani, which means literally I am. He uses uh, the word that was given to Moses, a higher after a higher. Uh-huh. That's why they got mad with him. Uh-huh. And so when you look in the regular Hebrew uh, scripture, they took out a higher. And put Aini or Anoki in there. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, but when you go to uh, uh, yeah. the Enoch, Enoch breaks down where the Noki is, which yeah. I'm not going to go into that. Go but, into um, it. Huh? You can brought it up. Go into it. Break it down, Moray. Okay. Well, let me uh, let me get. Um, well, you can see talking. Then I'll get. I'll get. Um, I'll get Enoch. Okay. And uh, so I'll be right back. Okay. Maury uh, Simmons said, uh, he said, I wish I had my voice. I'm responding to him. He, oh, so he's under the weather, too. Yeah. I told him, I said, like, I wish you did, too, Moray. Use <laughs> your fingers. <laughs> All right. So the yes. living word, righteousness. So we know that he's the living word. And, and um, Fred Hammond has a song about that. Mm-hmm. You are the living word. So we just yes. went over that and showed you that he is the word and that the word was sent and the word became flesh. He's the light. Mm-hmm. So we, we, he's the truth. <coughs> Excuse me. John 12 and 49 says, for I did not speak on my own. Mm-hmm. 
So this is Yeshua talking right here. Yeah. He said, I didn't speak on my own, but the Father who sent me. There you go. Yes. Commanded me to say uh, all that I have spoken. Ooh. Now I know when you used to preach, mm -hmm. when you used to pray before you would preach, you would say, "Let your word accomplish yes. that which it was sent to out, out to, to do." Him. Yes, for it will not come back void. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So it's going to accomplish mm -hmm. what it was sent out to do. Exactly. So he sent the word yeah. and the word became flesh hey, and it on, dwelt among on, us. And he sent that word mm -hmm. to bring life. He sent yes. that word to redeem. Yes. He sent that word to redeem us back to back the most to high. Him. Come on. And it is it, it accomplished. It, it sure did. Accomplish. And we, we're going to see that. It sure did accomplish because he, he said, I hope I'm not stepping ahead, but didn't he say it is finished? Didn't he say that? When and he, he gave up the ghost? He did, and it was not what, what is being taught that is the Torah. Mm. And we're gonna see, we're gonna get into that. We're gonna go strictly by scripture. Not what I heard, not what I think, not what I feel, not what somebody told me, mm -hmm. but strictly. What the word says. We're going to look at scripture. Like they said. Line upon line. Precept, precept upon, upon precept. precept. Yes. Here a little. There a little. The law. Or Torah. Done away with. Let me. Uh, Think not. That I am come to destroy the law. We are very familiar with this. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy. But to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5, 17 and 18. So, we're going to take a look at this here to see what is being taught if it aligns with scripture here. Let's see. So, we're going to take a look at some definitions here. Destroy. Uh, or sometimes some, some scriptures say abolish, destroy, put an end to the existing of something by damaging or attacking. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he said, I did not come to destroy. See, I didn't come to damage it or attack it. I didn't come to do any of that. Those some words that are they're similar to demolish, knock down, pull down, terminate, ravage shatter, sabotage, etc., etc. That's what destroy me. He said, I did not come to do those things. Anonyms. Y'all remember anonyms, homonyms, synonyms? So anonyms. Words that mean what they mean, I say. <laughs> exactly. The opposite. Synonyms the same. So we're going to look at the anonyms of it. Of destroy, destruction, demolish, knock down, pull down, terminate. It is to build, preserve, restore, raise. Now let's look at fulfill. What he said he came to do. Fulfill. Bring to completion or reality. Achieve or realize something desired. Something promised or something that was predicted to carry that thing out. A task, a duty or a role as required, pledge, or that which was expected. Synonyms. Attain, realize, consummate, satisfy, manage, carry out, carry through, bring to for it fruition, to deliver. The opposite, to fail, to neglect, to fail in. Okay, I'm, I'm at a good stopping point. If I sound like you back, more, Ray. Okay, I thought. Oh yeah, yes, I'm, I'm I'm back. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so in um, Enoch, uh, which is a. This is a particularly a long chapter, but uh, 
uh, Enoch 69. I'm going to start at verse 14, but you can read all the rest of it uh, later. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it gives the root word of the word Anoki, which is Ake or Ache. Um, now, there's two ways that some people say this name. They say the word, a name uh, as in uh, Ache, which which has the olive and the het, and some people use this uh, as a haya. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Both are really, when you look at this, both are correct. But I'm gonna, uh, I'm going to, oh, and the third one, some people use, depending on uh, who you're talking to, some people use uh, the ka in this. Okay. So I'm gonna read it, and it's gonna, it's gonna give you the name. Uh, the angel, this is starting at verse 14, the angel requested Michael to show him the hidden name and that he might uh, initiate it in an oath so that those might quake or shake before the name and oath who revealed all uh, that was in secret to the children of men. And this is the power of this oath, for it is powerful and strong. And he placed this oath Ake or Ache uh, in the hands of Michael, and those are the secrets of this oath. Um, they are strong through it, through this oath, and the heaven was suspended before the world was created uh, and forever. And through it, the earth was founded upon the water, and from the secret recesses of the mountains come beautiful waters, from creation of the world into eternity, and through all the oath, the sea was created. And it's the foundation, he said it, the sand against the time of its anger, and it dare not pass beyond it for a creation of the world into eternity. And through that oath are the depths made fast and abide and steer not from their place from eternity to eternity. And through that oath, the sun and the moon complete their course mm -hmm. and deviate not in the ordinances um, from eternity to eternity. And through that oath, the stars complete their course, and he calls them by their names, and they answer him for eternity to eternity. Mm -hmm. And in like manner, spirits of waters, spirits of winds, all the zephyrs, uh, and their paths from the quarters of the winds, and there are and there are preserved the voices of thunders, uh, of lightnings, and there are preserved chambers of hail, chambers of hoar frost, chambers of mist chambers of rain and dew, all these believe and give thanks unto Yahweh uh, of spirits and give glory to him with all their power and their food is in every act of thanksgiving and they thank and glorify and extol that name, the Yahweh of spirits, forever and ever. And this is the oath, it is mighty over them and through it they are preserved and their paths are preserved and their course is not destroyed. And there, uh, and there was great joy among them, and they blessed and glorified and exalted, uh, because that name, now watch this, listen, of uh, that son, the son of man, mm -hmm. has been revealed unto them, and he mm -hmm. sat on the throne of his glory, and the sum of his judgment was given to that son of man, we're talking about the Mashiach, mm -hmm. and he caused the sinners to pass away and to be destroyed from the face of the earth, and those who had led the world astray with chains shall be bound in their uh, place of destruction, shall be in prison, all their work vanished from the face of the earth, and henceforth shall be nothing corruptible. For that Son of Man has appeared and has seated himself on the um, throne, of, throne of glory, and all <laughs> evil shall pass away before his face, and the word of that Son shall go forth and mm. be strong before Yahweh of spirits, this is the third parable of Enoch, and so he gives that name um, that that I that I mentioned. And so that name is it, it's it's powerful in itself. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh my my. And, and my. we we have to understand that what word that is, because there's been some changing up of his name. Mm -hmm. We we know that. Yeah. Because yeah. scripture uh, says yeah. that the father gave him his name. Yeah, come on. That's what scripture on, yeah. says. And it's not That's what what has been called. 
I, I'm sorry. <laughs> to step on some toes tell it, here. Tell it, tell it. The word, the name that was given to him by the Father is not Jesus. Okay, you gotta get, you gotta get yourself in trouble. You better. <laughs> it was changed over time. There's been some changing by man, not by the Most High people, mm, by on. man. And I'm gonna show you because you when you go when he talks about I came to he said a prophet we're gonna get into that the prophets and the. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maurice Simmons said yes. Uh, when you get into up. when you get yes. into all of that, it uh -huh. shows you, it speaks to who he is. His yeah. name is revealed in those scriptures. Come on. Come on. Mm -hmm. When you go to yeah. Psalms in the, in the New Testament. He said T. Yes. <laughs> yes. Way, yes. Way more. His name is revealed way more in the old than in the new. It's Old's all the throughout the, not, the, the, the old. Not. Yes. yes, and Come it's on. all in the. It's in a lot of the Psalms. He's he's in a lot of the Psalms too. Yeah, right. his name, not Jesus. Now, now I know we say in the name of Jesus, and my husband said we was talking about mm -hmm. this mores. Well, you know, in the church they say, well, you know, what well, a lot has been done in His name, and it was well, you know, Scripture says that He weeks at our ignorance because we didn't know. But when you know better and you know fully that that name that the father gave to him, because there's life in yes. that name. Yes. It is me. Uh -huh. It's salvation. Actually, it means uh -huh. just that. We're we going to get into that. We're going to get on. Let me, let me move on. The law done away with. For it is not those who hear the Torah who are righteous. Hear me out. This is not Brenda words. That's why I said we're going by scripture today, people. We're not going by what somebody said, or what we've been taught. We're going by scripture. So if you have an issue with that, then that's between you and the one that gave the word. Take it up with the, with the one that gave it. Because <laughs> these are not my words. For it is not those who hear the Torah who are righteous. Remember, I talked about that word heart. Mm. Hearken unto my voice, hear, shima. That means to also respond to. So, for it is not those who hear the law who are righteous. He's telling you here what I just said about that word in his sight. In Elohim's shema, sight. Shema. shema, yes. Some people say yeah, Shema, some hear, people say Shema. Yeah. Obey. Yes. Can I interject real yes. quick. Uh, Moray Simmons. Moray Simmons said. If the church really want to learn his name, they need to understand Genesis 1 and 1. What the beginning yes. really means. Yes, that better sheet? Yes. Are you talking about better yes. sheet, Moray? Because that is loaded in there. Maybe we can do, do, to bring that out. do a teaching on that better sheet and just uh, break it all down because he's all in there. Yes. He's all so in. the receipt. Huh? It's even in the receipt. Yes, 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 it is. <laughs> when when you know what you you looking for, uh -huh. but if you don't know, no, you don't. You be like, well, what are they talking about? But once you start yeah, delving it's in, it's in the, it, it, it's a funny start to interrupt him because you get me excited. <laughs> <laughs> His word is it's, exciting. It's in, the, it's in the better sheet. It's in the better. It's in the Elohim, and it's in the olive top. Yes, it is. Yes, because he is the olive top. Right. Yes, and it is in there. Absolutely. <laughs> it sure is. You got that. Vo oh, oh, okay. We ain't going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. For it is not those Let's who hear the it. Torah who are righteous in Elohim's sight, but it is those who do what? Obey the law. And some people say, but I told you that it's really Torah. Yes. Who will be declared righteous? Romans 2 and 13. That's what scripture says. It is not those as...